Yeah. Monkey! Get down here! Get down! Get down! Get down! Get down. Stay down! Keep God, it's a nightmare out there. Could hardly get moved. Someone from the radio recognised me after it all came out. How do you feel, he said. You know, with the court case and everything. How do you think I feel? Like I've felt all my life. Angry. It's a nightmare out there, isn't it? Yeah. People shoving microphones in your face. And the photographers, they're the worst. Look this way, look that. Yeah, they're like animals. Makes you realise what it must be like to be Madonna. I suppose so. But then you're a bit of a celebrity, aren't you? What? You know, starring in your own film and everything. Don't know what you mean. Well, you're a YouTube sensation. 150,000 hits, last count. Who are you? I particularly like the bit where you threw John down onto the floor. Leave us alone. You don't recognise me, do you? Julie Bragg. No? John's mother. I don't want to talk to you. In your position, neither would I. I'm not talking to you. It doesn't matter. I'm going to talk to you anyway. What did you call it when you threw John down? Kissing the carpet. Nice phrase. Go away! I've got nowhere else to go. Got to stay here, same as you. Do you know what they call me? The parent from hell. Because that's the way I've had to be, fighting for John. I mean, he couldn't fight for himself, could he? So I had to do it for him, making a nuisance of myself. Trying to find him a place where he'd be happy, where he'd have a life. Then after all of my years of fighting, he ends up in your little hell hole. I don't have to stay and listen to this. Where else are you going to go? This is where you have to be, where they'll call us from. And the bad news is, I am not going to stop talking. Do you ever think about hell? What? Hell. Do you ever think about it? What, are you some sort of religious nutter? Not since the priest came round, told me how grateful I should be for John, how special he was, how he'd show a mirror to the world, teach people about themselves. Mind you, the way I see it now, he wasn't far wrong, was he? I mean, he taught you a lot about yourselves, didn't he? When faced with someone like John, you turn into torturers and bullies. I don't have to stay here to be abused. Oh, nice choice of words. Do you actually know what it means? Just leave me alone. Hell. Here's what I think about hell. We don't believe it exists anymore. We're just sorry that it doesn't. Because we'd really like a place like that to send people. Not forever, you understand. Not burning in the flames of hell for eternity like we're taught, but just for a while to get the message across. I wasn't the way. You threw John on the ground. It was what I was told to do. Just following orders, eh? I had no choice. You just stood by and let it all happen. You don't understand. You did nothing, nothing. You don't know what it was like working there. You did what Colin told you. You had to. Ah, yes. Colin, Colin the bouncer. Good choice for a carer. Whatever Colin said, you did it. Everyone was scared of him. Even the area manager, his office was on the top floor, but you never saw him. Not while Colin was around. And then Michael and the other nurse are supposed to be in charge, but still it was, yes, Colin. No, Colin. Whatever you say, Colin. And with him, it was always, get them down. Get them down. You were told that from the start. That was your training. That was it. Get them down. Make sure you don't leave a bruise. What did you think you were running? A prison? 
did you think they were in there because they'd done something wrong? They had to be punished. I didn't think. Is that it? I didn't think. He'd come for you, John. He could squeeze the life out of you. He was trying to hug you, for God's sake. Don't you get it? He was trying to bloody communicate. Yeah, well, it could be scary. He's got the same feelings as everyone else. Did that ever occur to you? Sometimes he's upset. Sometimes he needs a hug. Don't we all? Yeah, well, sometimes he could be violent. What do you expect in a place like that with violence all around when he's confused and upset with it all? And all he's getting from you is being thrown down on the ground when he's looking for some warmth, some humanity. We've been warned about and that's all I'm saying. We knew why he was in there, that he'd been sectioned. Sectioned? Yeah. Well, that's a whole other story. Oh, for God's sake, sit down. So why did you take the job? Why do you think? I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Because it was all I could get. Look, I know what you think of me, but I'm not stupid. I didn't think you were. I got GCSEs. Had a nice little job working in the estate agents, but that went bust. Worked in a shop after that, that didn't work out. Spent a year on the door, couldn't get anything after that. So that's what it was to you then? Anything bottom of the barrel? I mean, no one wants to do it, do they? Colin used to say that. Good, Colin again. He'd say, you know why the wages are shit, Hayley? Because it's a shit job that nobody else wants to do. Great. But it's true. You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. People only take it because they can't get anything else. And the wages are shit, that's the point. I had a friend working in an animal shelter. She was earning more than me. So that's what they are to you, then? Who? The people you were working with, people like John, animals. No. Less than human. I didn't mean that. They're not like us. Well, they're not like us, are they? Be fair. Look, I'm sorry. I'm not meaning to be rude about John or anything, but they're not like us. I used to feel sorry for the parents. I feel sorry for you. It must be hard having a kid like that. I mean, you have a baby, you hope they're going to turn out to be a doctor or a lawyer. Look after you in your old age. Instead, they turn out to be a... a gimp. No. That's what you called them. I didn't. Some of you did. I didn't. I wouldn't. You know, I used to wonder if I could do it. What? Love a kid like that. I mean, they can't exactly love you back, can they? You must have thought that sometimes. Like, maybe it would have been better if... Better? If something had happened. What? You know. No, tell me. Well, like, maybe they'd got ill or something. Or run over by a bus. No, I didn't mean that. Yeah, you did. People might not say it, but they think it, don't they? You know they think it. Have you ever noticed John's smile? What? No. Of course you haven't. Why would you? Well... Let me tell you, John has the sweetest smile you've ever seen. He doesn't smile like we smile. We smile when something good is happening to us. But that's not John's smile. It just appears for no reason. It's unconditional. Like love. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I don't know. No, of course you don't. I mean, you don't even know what abuse is. That's not fair. Of course it's fair. Well, you'll get your own back today, won't you? You think that's why I'm here for revenge? It is, isn't it? Justice, get what we deserve? A suspended sentence, community service. That's not what I'm here for. Come on, have a go at me. It's what you want, isn't it? Everyone else does it. I'm used to it. That's what you get for being a YouTube sensation. Everybody hates me. This woman on the radio said I was worse than Myra Hindley. I didn't even know who Myra Hindley was. I had to take my Facebook page down. Tragic. You sound like me mother. Is she here? God, no. We don't get on. 
Not after a dickhead boyfriend jumped on us. Apparently that was my fault. I'm sorry. Why? Because it's a shit thing to happen to anyone. You don't have to pretend you've got any sympathy for me, you know. I know you hate me. Not really. Don't believe you. You're not worth hating. Thanks. You're a nobody inconsequential. I've got a long list of hates before I get to you. You're way down the line. Go on then, who are they? How long have you got? The box tickers, the form fillers, the people I've been fighting with all my life. The ones who think I don't have anything to contribute. The ones who insist that John should fit in the system, not that the system should fit around John. You blame me though. Of course I blame you. You've got to be blamed. That's the price you pay. Oh, I'm paying all right. If it makes you feel any better, I'm paying big time. Actually, it doesn't. I tell you, whatever they do to me up there, it doesn't matter. Send us to jail, I don't care. Nobody speaks to me. My friends have all dropped us. I'll never get another job. Might as well top myself. Oh, please. Hello. Hello. I'm Julie Bragg. Sorry? Doesn't mean anything to you. I don't think so. John Bragg's mother. That's the John Bragg you allowed to be abused? I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to talk about the case. You're the one who handed out the contracts, aren't you? I'm afraid this conversation isn't really appropriate. I think it is. Entirely appropriate. I'm sorry, I'd rather not talk about the case. In your shoes, neither would I. Nice shoes, by the way. Perhaps it would be better if I waited outside. This is where we have to wait, where they're going to call us from. And you can't get moved out there for reporters. By the way, have you met Hayley? You know Hayley, from the film. Hayley and I were just exchanging ideas. Hayley, this is Alison Carr. She's the one who hands out the contracts. What is your proper title, Alison? Like I said, I really don't want to talk about it. Won't do me any good. Won't stop her from talking. Alison is what you call a commissioner, Haley. She hands out the contracts. I do not hand out contracts. It's a transparent tendering process. It's a point system and we award the contract to the best provider. It's a complex procedure. Whatever. The fact is you are responsible for giving the contract to the place where my son was abused. Look, I do understand the distress you must have felt. Feel. Get it right, not felt. The distress I go on feeling. Obviously we're all horrified at what's happened. That the standard of care should have fallen so far below what might be expected. Fallen below? Are we talking the same language here? It was abuse. It was torture. But as far as the original awarding of that contract goes, all the proper procedures were followed. Oh, here we go, all the boxes ticked. Much more than that, believe me. Look. It's not an easy job. If we hadn't gone through the correct process, we'd be the ones in court. As far as I'm concerned, you should be. Look, the fact is, there aren't hundreds of providers willing or able to provide the level of care required. I can only say that the company involved put forward the best tender. You mean the cheapest? That's not the way it works. Look, please don't think I'm not sympathetic. We're all extremely upset about what's happened. Good. And I can't talk about the situation in detail. I will say that we commissioned a huge amount of health care from providers, and as, as bad as the care was in this particular case, this was just one instance where things went wrong. And that's supposed to make me feel better. Why the hell didn't you know what was going on? Look, all of our providers are required to submit an annual report on key performance indicators. Blah, blah, blah. And these are checked. But you don't go visit. You don't go see what is going on. It's not feasible for us to carry out in-depth visits. We'd need an army of staff. You are paying out £3,500 per person per week for these places. Surely it would make sense to go and see if you're getting your money's worth. Hang on. Three and a half grand a week? That's what they're paying to keep people there. That can't be right. Yep, yeah, per person per week. And you on the minimum wage. £3,500 a week. You could stay at the Hilton for that. Don't throw you down on the carpet at the Hilton or shove you under a cold shower. Or maybe you pay extra for that. It's the job of the regulator to check places reach a minimum standard. 
Did you ever go and look at the place? What? Before you awarded the contract, did you look at it? Well, we scrutinised their bid. And after you scrutinised, did you happen to notice where the place was? Of course, yes. So you saw it was on an industrial estate down the road from the incinerator. What the hell kind of a message do you think that sends out? I'm sorry, I really don't know why you're focusing on this. It says out of sight, out of mind. It says all the people in this place are worth sod all. The real issue here is the carers, what they were caught doing. You handed out the contract, the best tender. Surely you must have known how they were going to keep their costs down. Cheap sight, rock-bottom wages. You are misunderstanding our position in this process. It's not as simple as that. Isn't it? And another thing. A TV in the corner is not a stimulating environment. That's not fair. We had games in the back garden. Yeah, we all saw the kind of games that you played, Hayley. And who the hell thought that Colin would make a good care worker? Colin. Colin who ran the place. Colin the bouncer. Pitbull Colin, who terrorised the staff as well as the patients. What idiot in human resources took him on when you could see from 50 yards what he was? Well, obviously that was the business of the provider. But shouldn't it have been your business? And the training? Shouldn't that have been your business as well? We were assured that the training was of a high standard. And you believe them. Tell her about the training, Haley. Get them down. That was it, wasn't it? Oh, and don't leave a bruise. Obviously, with hindsight, I agree. Clearly, the provision for training was unacceptable. The place wasn't a hospital. It was a dumping ground. Funny, that's what Colin used to say. That's a horrible thing to say. Yeah, but unfortunately true. He'd say, nobody wants these people, Haley. That's why they're here. Not even their parents want them. Jesus. Is that what you believed? That John was there because I didn't want him? Well, I don't know. I mean, it could be difficult. You think you need to tell me that? Let me tell you, there is no sadder feeling on God's earth than loving your child beyond measure and being scared of him as well. Being sectioned? Yeah. Let's talk about how he got sectioned, shall we? I was with some friends in Barcelona just a long weekend. I almost didn't go. I knew that John wasn't happy. He was going through a difficult time. On the Friday, he throws a wobbler in the home he's in. And what happens? The staff there wash their hands of him. There's no other way of putting it. 20 years I've had of John's wobblers screaming, spitting, pulling my hair when he liked, and on my own too, but I never walked off the job. It's a Friday. They don't want the hassle. Next thing after that, he's been carted away in a police van like he's a criminal. And the next thing after that, he's been sent to your place, 40 miles away and sectioned. And me, with a full-time job, trying to keep our lives together. How does that work, Alison? Sending someone miles away from home? We had no facilities nearer to meet his needs. And you thought that this place would meet his needs? Well, obviously, had we known he was going to... But you to... should have known that, that is the point. A licensed dumping ground. Funded by the taxpayers. Making money for shareholders. Well, of course, it's been closed down. Now. Yeah. Now after the damage has been done. What about me? What's going to happen to us? You surely can't expect any sympathy. I was just doing what I was told. Now I'm going to get blamed for everything. You should be blamed. What you did was disgusting. What do you think they'll do? Up there? I don't know. You know, the other night I googled myself. My name came up, what I'd done, the court case. Then this other Hayley Johnson came up, just been offered a part in a film. I wonder what it would be like to be here. Hayley Johnson. God. Good luck. You don't mean that. Actually, I do. Is 
she abused your son? You think you need to tell me that? I don't have any sympathy at all for her. I hope they give her what she deserves. What do you think she deserves? She knew what she was doing was wrong. But where did she pick it up from? That's the question. Where did any one of them pick it up from? What? The feeling that the people they were dealing with, people like John, didn't matter. That they were worth less than other people. That they didn't have the same rights as anyone else. Because if it comes from out there, in the world, then we're all in trouble, aren't we? Well, I'm going to the court. Are you coming? No. Why not? Don't you want to see justice done? For John? I won't. What? I won't see justice done. No, you're probably right. That's not the sort of justice I want. No. Right then. I am so tired. Fighting everyone who doesn't see John as I see him. John! Fighting the ignorance. Even nice people stare. But most of all, I am tired of fighting the system. All I want for John, the justice I want for him, is what I've always wanted. I want him to have a life. A life where he gets to do what he wants to do, go to bed when he wants, get up when he wants, have a cup of tea when he wants it, not when someone else wants him to have it. They didn't see him, you see. They didn't see the John inside, the person. That's the trouble. But they're not the only ones. That's the problem. People don't see the John inside. That boy who loves trains, who'll sit for hours watching them, who whoops with delight at macaroni cheese. That boy who pats the side of my face if he thinks I'm unhappy and smiles, that sunrise of a smile. Did you know what you were doing was wrong? Well, yeah, I mean, I did think it was weird that the first thing we were told is how to restrain them. I don't know, I just, you don't really think about it at the time. You're sort of just thrown straight in there with the 12 hour shifts and no supervisor. and It just engrosses you. Obviously, looking back at the footage, it's pretty horrible. But you didn't want to report that, did you not feel that you wanted to speak to Who <laughs> too? I never saw the area manager, not once while I was there. In my first few days, I saw Colin make one of the lads cry, and I asked Michael the nurse about it, and he literally brushed me off. And Colin made a beeline for us after that, and he just had it drilled in my head. This is what needs to happen, otherwise they'll come for you, they'll get you, stick with me. I know how to run this place. I was scared of losing my job, so I just went along with it. So you think Colin deceived you in a way? Well, I was just <laughs> scared of him. I mean, I realised some of the stuff he was saying sounded a bit mad. He was terrifying. I saw how he was with him. I saw how he was with everyone else. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to get singled out. And, and how about John, specifically? How, you know, why do you think John behaved the way he did? I suppose thinking about it, he was probably just really scared. I was scared. Colin always said that he was dangerous, so I believed him. Do you think John got the same rights as you? I mean, you know. I suppose. I suppose he has, yeah. It's 
suppose it doesn't seem that way from how I treated him. Or but thinking back now? Yeah. I mean, we were supposed to get training on the job. It's not really an excuse. I know that that was the job I was getting into, but I'd, I'd never dealt with anyone like John before or any of the blokes in there. So you'd be able to work out if John was ill, for example? You know, if there was a problem with him? With Michael, the other nurses. They were overworked. I mean, there was 15 men in the home. There was only supposed to be nine. You just rarely saw them. They hardly ever got checked up, and it was left to the floor staff, like us, the carers. And we were working such long hours, and, you know, we're calling, and we're all really stressed. The checks weren't really regularly made. I didn't make them. So you wouldn't know if he, he had an abscess on his tooth or if he was had a health issue? Or no, we were told if things like that happen, you get the nurse. They were, you know, I wasn't allowed to deal with medication or anything like that. You'd go and get the nurse because I hadn't completed me training. I don't think anyone there had really completed their training, any of the carers in any case. You just had to, had to track down a nurse. And if John were here, what would you say to him? That I was sorry. I suppose that's a bit pointless saying that now, I suppose. I don't know what I would say. Um, Alison, wait. Why did you choose to hand the contract to this provider? Was it because their estimate was the cheapest? Um, cost is just one of the factors that we take into consideration. I mean, there's so many different factors when considering a tender, um, and it's not as simple as just about being about cost. Yeah, but cost must have come into it somehow. I mean, how carefully did you go through the figures to see if they were going to achieve that? I I'm thinking, for example, of uh, the provision they might have made for training. Um, when we consider a, a, a tender, we have to, as I say, we have to take into account all the different, you know, there's loads of different things, and we have to tick all of those boxes. So, for example, um, the training, you know, we're assured that the training is of a high standard, safeguarding, um, premises. I mean, there's so many different elements to a, to a particular tender, and we had to check all of those out, and they seemed to come good on those, all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, that clearly wasn't the case, but... Uh, well, clearly it wasn't. Right. Uh, I'm just thinking now about the annual review. Um, I just wonder what sort of questions were being asked. I, I mean, I take it there was an annual review. No, there was an annual review. Right. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, the, the CQC went in to Clifton Gardens and, um, and they came out and they said it was fine. Um, you know, they, um, I mean, we had no more complaints about Clifton Gardens than we do about any of our other providers, you know. Okay, well, obviously they were they weren't asking the right questions. Do you think, I mean, in your experience, would you say that there was a lot of box ticking going on? Uh, I mean, isn't there a need to change the whole system? The whole system needs to change. I think, you know, there's been problems in the past, obviously, with what's happened at Clifton Gardens. Um, and I think we have to recognise that change is, change is needed throughout the whole system. Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, if you could, what would, what would you have done differently? Or how, how do you think things have to change in the future then? Well, obviously, it's something that I've thought a lot about, and I think there's a lot of change needs to happen. Um, I think we need to be moving away from from um, huge sort of commercial organisations, you know, using those kind of um, companies who are, you know, profit-based. I think we need to be looking to provide us incentives to sort of maybe forming smaller kind of groups, clusters of, of, of carers who provide really good quality care, um, specifically tailored to meet the needs of people with, you know, learning disabilities, challenging behaviour, mm -hmm. autism, um, and providing incentives to them to, pr to provide good quality care. And, and, you know, perhaps we can forge good relationships with them so we can monitor the services they provide more, more closely. Mm -hmm. so how do you feel personally about what, what happened there? I feel it's appalling. I mean, I, you know, I just... I suppose I would uh, just have to put myself in the position of, of um, if it was my child and what I would want, you know, in this particular case. Um, I just, I just think that we seem to be falling away from moving away from personalised care. I think we need to be looking at providing good quality personalised care, and I think, unfortunately, in this particular case, 
it wasn't about that. So you see a very different system, a very different way of w helping people who are learning disabled in the future then? I, th I, I think I've got to hope that that happens. I mean, I think we have to move towards a very different system because it's, it's shown that we, there are huge failings within the system as it stands and we have, to, you know, it's happened before. It could very, very easily happen again. Julie, what, what do you think people like you need most of all? I think that's an easy one. Support. I've spent most of my time fighting on my own for John. And you feel alone. I mean, when he got sectioned, I didn't know who to go to, what, what to do. I didn't even know there was a complaints procedure to go through, a tribunal system. I know now. Quite simply, people like me need support, understanding, but more importantly, support. What, what do you want for John, I mean, now? Independent, supported living. Something I've always wanted for him, so he could have a life. I mean, if I had the three and a half thousand pounds per week, I think I'd be able to organize that, and he'd have a wonderful life. And I don't think it'd cost as much as that as well. Do you think generally that parents should be more involved in, in the support uh, the places their children are, are sent to? Yeah, I do. I think, I think, for example, if we'd been, oh, if we'd been involved in the place, in any kind of place where our children are sent to, for example, if we're on an interview panel. Like a management committee? Yeah, 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 management committee, so we, we can interview the staff there. Then you wouldn't get somebody like Colin through the system. You could spot him a mile off. We'd know the people who care. Now you said you spent a long time on your own looking, looking after John. Um, why did you and your husband split? Did that happen around the time John was born? Or I think, um, I think any couple, when they come across challenges that's going to going to challenge their relationship and it just brought the situation with um, John and the added difficulties just made those problems in our relationship already worse I don't think it was because of John I think so the cracks were there before yeah. yeah the cracks were there before I don't think there's absolutely no way I would blame John for the disintegration of our relationship. I say that because it's, it's unfortunately a common feature of uh, people with... It is, and this is, I can only talk for myself, it is because the stresses are huge, but as, as we've said before, you know, if we had more support, maybe some of these marriages would survive. Personally, I don't think our marriage would have survived anyway. Hello, my name is Dr. Dominic Slowey and I chair the Clinical Network for Learning Disability in the northeast of England. Um, like many people, I saw the Panorama documentary in May 2011 about the events that went on at Winterbourne View and was horrified uh, that that level of abuse could happen uh, unnoticed and unchecked. But uh, I also had some feelings of, of sympathy uh, towards the professional carers in that situation, that they had been led to believe that that, that was acceptable. And uh, it started me wondering, well, how does that situation arise? And what does this say about us as a society? And how do we value people with learning disability uh, being part of our society? It also struck some notes of concern with me because whenever there's a scandal and an outrage and there's a whole catalogue of scandals and outrages in, in learning disability care over a number of years, it seems that we have a knee-jerk response and we prosecute, as we, we did in this case, the offenders um, or the perpetrators of poor care, yet 
it goes on to happen again. So, so it, it, it led me to sort of very much ask myself the question, what really needs to happen to stop this happening again? And what do we need to put in place uh, to stop providers like Castlebeck Care and uh, the Winterbourne View Hospital um, making lots of money out of providing very, very poor quality care? And I think this fundamental philosophical question really that society has to grapple with, do we value people with learning disability? What value do they give to us as a society? And how should we be caring for them? Um, in one of the very pivotal reports called Healthcare for All, Sir Jonathan Michael wrote at the very start of it uh, the, that we can measure the humanity of our society and the quality of our society by how we treat the most vulnerable people who live within it. Uh, and I think we really need to sort of hold that in mind when we're thinking about how we commission care and services for people with learning disability because it's not just about containing challenging behaviour, it's about understanding what that challenging behaviour is trying to communicate. There's always a function to everybody's behaviour and it's only when we try and understand well what, what is this person trying to communicate that we'll start to get to the bottom of how we can best help them and how we can best um, help them learn to not behave in that way. But you know, when you hear stories of people with dental abscesses and, uh, and pancreatic cancers even, who are becoming challenging in their behavior because they don't know how else to communicate their symptoms, it, it's a very frightening situation to think that what we do is just say, well, this behavior is unacceptable and we essentially lock them away with questionable use of the Mental Health Act and questionable use of what we call hospital care and what we call assessment and treatment, which I think in many instances is simply containment of behaviour that we haven't got the either the energy or the interest or the motivation to explore and understand further. I think what gives me a lot of hope is that I know that there are places that are doing this in, in an absolutely wonderful way. Uh, there are areas even in the UK that are using positive behavioural support models. Uh, they're really going for independent supported living for, for most people, even some of the most challenging people who uh, doctors and hospitals have said, these people will never live independently and yet they're doing so. So that really gives me hope, it gives me energy, it gives me passion to try and make sure that this is the norm rather than the exception and that if we really get our heads together we can make sure that Winterbourne View is not just another um, incident in a whole list of scandals that are going to go over very many years.